Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Alex Antuna and today I'm gonna, I guess I'll narrate a little bit over this painting that I did in Vermilion VR. You can see it's like a background, middle ground, and foreground. Kind of break it up when I paint this piece. Um, you'll see right here I have a reference that I used. The reference was pulled from Mid Journey AI that I found a lot of inspiration from and uh, kind of get some ideas. You can pick and choose as you need, right? Depending on how you want to use that tool. I always find it interesting uh, seeing all the various color schemes in there. There's a lot of vibrant color palettes, I guess, whenever they use them where the AI uses the imagery. So right here, I'm pretty much getting the colors and just blending together paint. This is a fun process. It's not, you know, you haven't really put anything to the canvas. You haven't really started painting. So this is kind of a no stress area, right? You just kind of getting what you see on the canvas and pulling from here and there and just trying to see if you can get close enough to that color what I see is um, there's some blue some green some you know dark muted colors the sunset area you see you know some lighter oranges to yellow and you can get that with just mixing white and that orange and a little bit of yellow I'll tap in a little blue here let's see what we get mud <laughs> But it, it kind of pulls off to that little bit of a, a canvas at the bottom, so I'm kind of blurring it here. It's a fun process. You just kind of go and learn as you go. I use the this bottom area for kind of like getting a lot of my colors out, so I don't mess with my palette on the side just kind of go from there looking at the reference looking at my paints look at the reference paint back and forth right this was just sped up slightly I find that if I speed it up too fast it gets a little dizzy when you watch it back so it's about a safe speed I felt Trying to get some muted grays on the canvas. Back and forth, back and forth. Just trying to fill it up with something besides white. I just kind of want to fill up the canvas with something. So, right there, it looks like I picked up some of the paint when I tabbed it. So first mistake, right? Or not, right? If Bob Ross says happy accident. So, um, I try my best not to, you know, do the undo button if, if I'm just kind of painting for fun. And that's what I felt like this image reference was. It's just uh, a fairly straightforward uh, painting I could, you know, paint as, uh, you know, throughout the week. Just when I get a little time here and there, just paint 15 minutes, 15 minutes. And eventually get a little painting. But those mistakes I'm gonna leave in. I'll paint over them, I'll fix them. It's not a big deal. If you mess up, it's not a big deal. You could always add more paint over it. I'm gonna start adding in the, the sky. You can see the color is fairly close. It's gonna be a little darker on the edges, a little more vignette feel. this image also because um kind of reminds me of me and my wife looking at the stars at night in the backyard it's always you know at late at night when there's no moon and it's out here in the uh, we're not in any city area we're kind of outside of town so you can see the stars really nice and I always love you know looking up at the sky you can start to see that I'm darkening the edges 
back and forth, dabbing in some paint. And real loose. It's a real loose, happy feeling. Don't uh, be afraid to adjust these settings here. The canvas mixing sensitivity and the paint thickness. That'll kind of get you um, a well-rounded um, control of your brush. Is what I'm finding. I'm, I'm still a few months into painting with Vermilion, but over the few months that I have played with this program, I'm finding that adjusting the brush settings get me a little bit more uh, to my goal a lot quicker. If I don't change those settings, sometimes it feels a little longer process to get a look. And you can get there with the standard settings, but it's, sometimes it's just easier just to crank them up or drop them down to get a look. This color's a little muted, and it looks like I touched paint again, but it's okay. We're just going to keep painting. We don't care. I look at it, and I'm like, what happened? <laughs> I say, oh, this paint will go here. Just feel, you know, when you paint, just feel open with it. You know, really put paint around. That's what we're doing. We're kind of building our composition as, as I'm doing this. I'm starting mainly with the background, the sky, to actually get like a look. Let's see how it looks. A little blue. I was like, you know what? I'm going to put a little blue in here. And just because you pull from a reference, don't mean you have to follow it one to one. Unless that's just something that is in your goal, um, or you're doing a portrait, then you probably want to get as close as you can. But something like this, that's real loose, just, you know, it's for inspiration. There was a lot of variations. I know there's a lot of mixed feelings with AI and artists. Um, looking at it as a tool, I honestly don't feel it going away. It's here to stay, so might as well use it. Um, there was a lot of uh, references of the same image that it gener generated and some of them had like a tree that was on a tree and this one if you look at it I don't follow one to one that tree has a tree growing out of it and so you'll find a lot of weird stuff with AI sometimes with people with ten fingers or something like that on one hand and you know use it as a, a tool I am pretty uh, surprised how, how much it can kick out. I'm just like, this is pretty neat. Because for me, I like painting clowns. And if I look online, if I do a Google search, you're only going to get like a limited amount of clowns pulling from the internet. But if I type it in, it'll give me hundreds and hundreds of clowns and crazy variations. And so that's what's pretty cool. Kind of a time saver if you look for references. Or an inspiration uh, thing. Use it, you know, gather a lot of images and kind of use them as inspiration. Just kind of blending in these colors. And hopefully, this is a fairly, sh not, you know, it's not a three hour, four hour video, but it is, you know, a little about almost an hour and a half. This paint uh, program for Million is so fun, and the developer he actually added um, layers. So on the latest update, the layers actually can merge down. So now you can almost have unlimited layers. I like the layers whenever you look at it as if you know you let your paint dry and it doesn't blend. And so that's that's whenever I would use layers if I were to look at it that way, or you could even use it to as it like photoshop really if you can drop and push a pull and there's also some um, refinement of the layers uh, that there used to be like a halo when you would use layers and now it's gone and so that's awesome it's just this program keeps getting better no complaints here right as you can see I'm just kind of filling in the gaps you just, you just block it in Putting color here, color there. I really just kind of have fun with it. It's not, this isn't something to stress with. It's not something to be like, oh my god. Something to kind of relax your mind and just kind of um, 
outside world kind of fades away. Put on some music, put some headphones on, or radio, or whatever you have, and paint away. So once the background is kind of set in place, I start to form out those clouds and give them a little more definition. And you'll kind of see where, where this is going. Uh, the bottom part, I just kind of use a lot of brushes to paint upwards to make it like a little grass piece. And the, the characters in the painting, I kind of use it a little bit at the end of the thing. The trees, I kind of do it near the end. Along with the stars. The stars are the fun part, right? Pick a bright color, dab it on this on that little canvas. I always find, even with watercolor, when I was trying to learn to paint a little better with watercolors, that the nighttime sky was probably the easiest thing or the funnest thing also to paint with because you do a, a background, a middle ground, a foreground. Just kind of blending in colors and making the sky, making the mountain or whatever you're painting. Go from there. And and usually I like these because the foreground's a little bit of a silhouette, so you don't have to be real specific with detail. It doesn't it doesn't need to uh, be so defined. Just shadow shadow areas. So I'm adding a little green. I saw green. Put green, and I'm gonna probably put blue on top of it again, and just kind of blend that together. You can see the colors. There's green in there, right? But how much green? So you just kind of blending it together. I like to play with that. And it was a little, a little fun. these edges right here kind of focus your eye when you when you make the edges a little darker the vignette something we add back in photography where you're adding a vignette back into pictures that don't have a vignette it's crazy we're going to add back the imperfections that we originally started with from back in the day, right? This brush is the fun brush uh, with making clouds. And you'll mix, put the paint thickness down and up the sensitivity of, of your brush. And then you'll get some real smooth results. It, it just, just back and forth swirling it back and forth and you'll get some pretty cool results of clouds it takes a little bit you know you're just kind of going in circles just doing that brush and just pushing pushing paint pushing that paint around sometimes I'll dip it in that little thinner in the that uh, container in the bottom I guess uh, get it wet with a um, A little more result, watery result. You can just start seeing the colors starting to bind together. The greens, the blues, they start to become one once you start blending enough. And this is the fun part to me. Just, just making little clouds and just going back and forth. It's just very calming, relaxing. And then when you step back from the image, you can actually see like, oh man, this is turning into something that was just blobs of paint on a canvas or anything. This technique also works in real life. You can you can do this with uh, watercolors too, kind of get a little blurriness, blending, acrylics. The the only real one that I never really do in uh, real life was oil because it was so so much uh, a little messier um, than cleaning up with acrylic to me it was I don't know uh, other folks have had 
better experiences with it. But I always know that the oil took a long time to dry. <laughs> so this this kind of once I found this program, I was just like, I'm in. I'm, I'm kind of painting here. Plus, you don't have to get out of everything, right? No mess. You just turn off the headset and press save. Come back to it later. So I don't know about you, but I'm messy whenever I start painting in real life. I'll have like newspaper out on the table, paint brushes, paint tubes, paint on your clothes, paint everywhere, paint on your napkins. And then you got your cups of water to, you know, blend everything else. And then at the end, you got to clean it up. Unless you have a space for that, right? And that you're always going to be able to go to. I don't really have space like that where we live, but we make we make do with what we can, right? Make do. So you can see this is like real loose. And even if, um, you know, you feel like it's like, you know, when you're painting, you're like, man, this is not going the way I want. If you keep going, sometimes you'll get there. Sometimes if you don't, you know, if you just keep going forward, you'll you'll eventually get somewhere. And if you mess up, then, you know, just paint it out like that. You saw that? I'm just blending it back and forth. I was like, oops. Now you just push it back and forth. That's really what it comes down to when you when you have something you accidentally touched and if for whatever reason you just want to fix it, you can undo it, yes, but you can also paint it out too. So there's hope. So there you go, thickness all the way up, smudgeness gone. Now you get a thick, heavy paint. So we want to paint this vignette back in. see that right there now now we're kind of like a little more aggressive with this paint I think the top had a little bit more uh, diluted water the that bucket there I go back to this back to that blending it in look at that pretty cool And for anybody starting with painting or beginning, this, this kind of technique, foreground, middle ground, and background, works awesome if you're just wanting to kind of go with anything. And you'll see that a lot with Bob Ross paintings. He'll, he'll start with the background and the clouds, and you'll see it, and then he'll go to the mountain, paint that in, and he'll go to the foreground and start painting all those trees. And that's a very similar process here, too. We're starting with the background. We know what we want. We want some color, some clouds, and we're building it up. Then we go to the next stage. And I'm kind of doing the foreground, just kind of place it in place. It's not really too big of an issue right now. It's just pretty much just a dark area. We just want to kind of build our composition. Sometimes when I when I draw, I like to block it all out with just a little outlines here and there. I didn't do the trees. I was kind of like, yeah, I'll just figure those out later. I like painting trees. Um, it just depends on what kind of tree it is, right? If you want the little twig trees or one with a lot of leaves and stuff like that. But I like the ones in this reference. So I kind of stuck with the little no leaves on them. Kind of reminds me of the winter, cold winter night looking up at the sky. That's how it's been lately. A lot of cold nights with some beautiful stars. You see that blending it in, just swirling, going back and forth, just making a mess with the brush, just just pushing and pulling that paint. And it's those little swirls that actually kind of make up that look of a of a cloud. Just the going in, in a circle. doesn't take too much I'm not following the reference like I said one to one and just kind of doing my own thing a little bit so here and there because I wanted a little more of that sky to touch touch it like kind of vignette up at the top and a little more cloudiness 
the the one on the right almost seems watercolor uh, look and that's something I've been trying to like achieve with vermilion that little bit of a watercolor I'm still learning the, the I'm always learning we're always learning right you, you don't ever stop learning if you do stop learning then I need to step back a little bit and see why because there's always something to learn even in 3d I do 3d uh, for a living and um, 20 almost 23 years of doing 3d and uh, I'm still learning <laughs> you, you never stop there's always something to come out that you gotta learn whether it be ZBrush Unreal uh, Engine um, Blender now I'm throwing in Blender with the new tool set I enjoy and, uh, anything else that comes up Nomad Sculpt on my uh, tablet just learning where things are Lightroom Photoshop even Photoshop still has new tools coming out tool bag I do a lot of tool bag uh, I haven't done any tutorials lately on it uh, for anybody who follows this channel and says there's all the tool bag I just been so busy and uh, if you do something all week uh, tend to not jump back in it on the weekends on my days off or when my free time I, I do a little bit you know to watch videos and learn but sometimes you gotta take a break you don't wanna, you don't wanna burn out I think that's why you see a lot more painting lately is because I'm, I'm trying to get away from the computer because I sit at the computer all day. And sometimes you gotta, you gotta step away a little bit, get outside, or get outside that zone. For me, that is. I don't know. Everybody's different. I think when I was younger, I could probably sit at a computer all day. You know, when I'm older. I'm kind of like I need to, need to know when you step away. Know when you gotta step away. So that's why I like the Oculus. Oculus kind of gets me. I'm still creating. I'm still making art, but I'm not on the computer drawing, drawing with my uh, tablet and using something like Photoshop or Krita or whatever the programs are. I love those programs, but sometimes I just need a break, you know. Look at this, the little sky, just starting to pop it a little bit more, just get a little more thickness down there. Sometimes when you paint, you can also squint your eyes and you can kind of see where the highlights and contrast is. That kind of helps sometimes. Or stepping back. Stepping back also helps too. Uh, between the edits, I, I step back to look at the canvas because it always helps when you need to see something. Um, when you're standing too close to something, sometimes you need to step back. It helps with a lot of things. use that little wet wet brush technique right here so you can start to see it starting to form getting in there a big part of this was just doing the grass at the bottom looking back and forth looking for something a color or something there's my color <laughs> where did I put this color it's over there let's dab a little here let dab a little there let's play it in when I play back these videos sometimes you know you can tell what I'm thinking when I'm looking back and forth like oh, what did I miss Kind of a dreamlike image. Very dreamy. See, and once you kind of just push and pull, that that kind of fades into each other. I do like. Um, sometimes, whenever you kind of just don't think so much and do, you know, just start painting. Sometimes those chaotic details are what help you see more uh, into something. I did a video, and it's on YouTube somewhere, but years ago where uh, you get a blank piece of paper and just kind of scribble on it. 
don't even think use your use your hand that you don't use you know if you're left-handed draw with your right hand your right handed draw with your left hand and so just do some scribbles on paper and then just kind of like look at the paper and see what you see what shapes you see and I kind of relate this to when you're when you would look at clouds and you would see shapes of animals and stuff and you could see like oh that looks like a dinosaur that looks like a turtle same thing when you paint sometimes you just don't paint down and just don't think so much and see what you see and then go from there sometimes that happens that's like where that little creative inspiration comes from where just uh, when you turn your brain off and you're not thinking so much but you get kind of like in that hey say like a, a childlike thinking where it that where everything seems like you know oh cool look at that i could see this in here there's a dragon floating in this these lines that i just scribbled the same kind of thing happens with um, a lot of art when you uh, do stuff i do something like that in zbrush i used to do a lot of um, uh, everyday sculpting and i would just start with the basic mesh and just kind of push and pull to see where it went a lot of times it wasn't really worthy of showing anything. It was just kind of me getting in practice of getting out of my head, getting out of your own way, and just creating something. And I think over the years of doing that, that kind of helped uh, to refine that, that creative part of the brain to, to not be so rigid. Because there's, sometimes you get a project in, in what I do, and if you get... If you, if you freeze and you don't create nothing, you're not going to get anywhere. So sometimes it's best just just to start. Just start doing something and get it going. And eventually you'll get there, right? If, if, whether you're going one way or another, you'll figure it out. It's just um, moving forward, really. It's like this painting. It was just like... You, you, you saw me just kind of starting out and... and when I started out, I was just ma mainly blending the colors, but that small part of starting, of blending colors and getting your palette right, that's starting. That's getting you going in the direction of doing, getting your tools set up. You know, it's just, just moving forward and going. Just moving that brush. As you can see, the more you just keep painting the more something starts to happen you start to see like shapes you're like oh there's a little clouds here looking like smoke now a little bit of smoky clouds but it's a cool effect that I like I like these kind of uh, wispy clouds that are in the sky and the more you blend them the more you know fluffy they get so you can go back and forth for anybody who's you know using these techniques not gonna lie, these techniques I learned from a lot of Bob Ross videos. I, I and when I got Vermilion, um, growing up, like I said, I said like Bob Ross would show on Channel Thirteen, <laughs> and uh, it was just that that little window of the day, and we didn't have what we have today, like YouTube or anything to go back and rewind. We couldn't rewind. We didn't have unless you had a VCR to re record it every day, but that was rare, right? But nowadays, it's at your fingertips, so I took advantage of that. I, I watched a lot of Bob Ross videos. Started with season one and just painted as much as I can, and I, and I could rewind it and play it back, and, and that's so fun. And I've only got through, like, I'm almost to season two, I think, but I think I kind of stalled on a few of them. I think I went back and kind of revised some more, but it's so fun uh, just being able to follow his techniques and paintings you'll learn a lot from him a lot of inspiration I think that's why um, I think that's where we ended up here you know just like that, that stuck with me for years to, to want to paint and even now if you put on a Bob Ross video you feel like at ease right it comes very, very calming Now we're adding in the water right here, and this is little strokes back and forth, just so I can kind of like hide it with the grass later on, because I know the grass is going to paint in front of it. But I want to lay down that foundation that the, the water is right there. 
So now I'm starting to play with the fan brush. The fan brush is awesome for doing like grass. You just kind of lay it in there. I don't know why I started in the foreground. I just kind of, I think I was just kind of playing around with it. Probably should have started a little further back. I could have actually just kind of blended it right there and just called it a day, right? It have been a quicker painting, but I think I kind of pushed it back to the background. Kind of trying to get my, um, my footing with the brush when you, when you use a different brush it's kind of like all right let me get used to this real quick the the techniques and stuff i think a uh, the smooth brush is what i end up using not this bristle brush the bristle is cool for getting like variation and noise and and what's crazy about painting is that your brain will register that it'll register um that chaotic and it, and it puts it into something right that chaos now I'm okay with the orange blending into the brush because that almost gives like the sunlight kind of give a little highlight to the to the grass blades that was a, a little accident but it was a good accident Just kind of laying in the grass in the background too. Very cool. So you can just kind of see back and forth, back and forth with this. A little bit later, I kind of get a little more refined. Kind of break that horizon with a little bit of grass where the gra the where the water flows. Kind of keeping the reference in mind, you know, looking back at it and seeing where everything is. But you can kind of see that the the sky was pretty good at a good point. I was like, all right, we can go to the next phase and just start getting this grass built up. And I believe I'll change my settings a little thicker or whatever, but we'll see. It'll it'll eventually get where it needs to be. As the image that you saw in the beginning. So kind of painting it a little more aggressively. See that? Long strokes, long strokes. Boom, 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 boom. I think sometimes when you're a little more rigid and trying to be too perfect. It doesn't come out right but whenever you just kind of like long strokes or whatever it just kind of comes a little easier it's just crazy so those transitions mean that either I started the next morning and this wasn't all done in one sitting it was every morning probably you know early in the morning a little time and you know 15 30 minutes in the morning to get my coffee and paint Seems like I'm still messing with the sky. I wanted something there, I guess. You can see I got a different brush too, huh? Just kind of like, let's just see what we can get. A little more, a little more blotchy. They always say like, uh, what's that saying? That paintings are never finished. They're just like put aside, right? I always never feel like anything's like finished because you could always do like so much more if you had another hundred hours to add to something right but the the thing that I was trying to do and I've been trying to do is set like little deadlines for me to kind of finish and get to the end of a, a painting I need to do something like that with ZBrush again. It's just um, been been real busy on the computer, so it's been kind of um, I need my little breaks here and there to get away from the machine. Okay, now I'm starting with the tree. So this brush, I think I start with, but then I kind of go to a different one. Um, I'm trying to 
gets him long. Kind of comes out a little sloppy. I think I change up the brush. There you go. Thick it. Thickness is <laughs> real low. Let's get that thicker. Boom. That's what I should have did from the start, right? That that little window I, uh, I use a lot. I wish it was a a quicker access to it because I'd be modifying it off and on. It reminds me of the intensity, like or the brush size when you use um, like ZBrush or Photoshop. It's always going to be that. Now I'm starting to paint it over to the water side and blending in there. The left side hasn't gotten much love. Um, I'll start to get there too in a little bit. Long strokes. Want some, want some blades of grass going up. I like that this picture kind of tells a little story. Back and forth. Here we go. A little bit on the horizon, just to kind of break it up. The sunlight won't be going all the way around that grass. That that it'll be a little translucent on the grass, but um, we're just having fun. That right there, look at long grass. That that's, that's what I needed. But you gotta paint upwards. Boom. The very darks in the foreground. You can't really see it in this video as clear as what it is on the headset, but those darks, you can see the outlines in the foreground real good. So we can just kind of go with this. Notice, um, I'm only, so far I've only used like, what, that big brush, the two inch brush, this fan brush, and that smudge brush, right? That's really what it's down to. Just, just minimal. But it works. I think I'm kind of building it up here. Um, I know I'm gonna kind of go back and refine it. But I kind of want to peek up. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. I'm curious where everything's gonna be in like you know in a year from now. What what kind of you know like we're we're already with this you know where it's at and I'm happy with it. But could you imagine next few years where this type of creation that you can do in a headset and make you feel like you're actually painting um, in real life? Where this will be? It's pretty cool. I think I think the um, Oculus for me has um, impressed me a lot with how much you can create with it. I never pictured it being a creator, uh, you know, for art. When I I guess when I first kind of got into it, it was you know there was games and there was spaces and you know your social areas that you know we we work on for work we actually do this for work uh, the VR spaces and um, it's crazy that you know it, that this it's a fun direction that everything's going like yeah there's games out there games are fun on the oculus but this creation parts a whole nother door that um, I don't know if everybody knows about if or if anybody's looked into it that's why I like sharing these videos and showing that you can create inside of a headset and it feels about as natural I actually let my mom try the oculus uh, a few months back and she loves the paint she's you know kind of learning and um, 
she was she was having fun with it. It was it was you know it when you experience it in person, you just kind of like oh wow you can <laughs> I can do this all day until my battery runs out right. That's when you need a little battery pack on your headset. But for what it is, it's, it's pretty neat. And even over time, I could see the Oculus getting a little more comfortable. Right now, it's a little kind of bulky. Sometimes, if it's too hot, you know, you'll, you'll, you know, it'll, it'll be a little hot on your face if you have it turned up or anything like that. But I think over time, as things develop, right, it, it's going to get better. It can only go better. And right now, I'm pretty happy with it. It's just uh, there's just there's more to grow. It's it's all good. It's it's fun. These trees, I'm using the little brush, and you see that press B to disable the hand stabilizer. Pressing B on the Oculus will kind of make your brush a lazy brush. Give you a little more smoother strokes. I like it because uh, it, it just it does just that. It, it actually does a really good job of that. Um, it helps get these these lines from being too uh, shaky. Because in real life, you know, you're pressing against a canvas, so you kind of got like a little, kind of a gauge, but sometimes it's the little helping helps, the little stabilizer. So just putting little branches here and there. Must be like a little bit of a, kind of a wintry scene. That's how I take it. With the, kind of those weeds that grow in the winter, right? The ones that never die, they just, they probably got dried up and they're just there throughout all winter that's what we got in the yard back and forth rinse and repeat long twigs long long little branches here and there a little color a little color on that it wasn't a pure black color it was a little blue in it I think looks like that blue I'll thicken up this tree as I go along there you go I'm just trying to make it like a little, a little bit over here. I'm not really looking at the reference too much. I know there's trees there, so I'm just kind of painting in whatever I feel like uh, should be a tree, or those long um, finger-like trees that don't really have a trunk. They just kind of grow from the ground. Got a few of those in the yard too, <laughs> the backyard over here. A lot of our trees are thorn trees, so they're kind of a crazy. You can't just cut them down. If you mow over them, then you flatten your tires. And so. There we go. A little more than halfway on this video. And, um, you know, if you stuck it out this long, then cool. Hope, I hope it's informative and learned something to learn from as always I'm always learning from anything when you do something or, or gaining experience that's another way to look at it I guess I could probably have used a thicker brush, but I think I like this brush, the way it, it, it feels, so I just kept with it. Just kind of going along the path and getting, when you do it this way too, it also kind of builds up that texture on the bark, building up that paint. Touched a little of the uh, background pulled it back into the tree but that's good that's like a little highlight that that 
you know, it's not a bad thing. See that trunk got a little thick, it got a little weird, and now I'm just kind of paint it back in and then make the bottom trunk match it. So just kind of a back and forth. Go here, go there. And just going back up. There you go. As I keep going up, the trunk gets thicker, so that's a good thing. Long branches. And yeah, just making it making it my own. I did want that bottom where the sun to be a little brighter. I guess that's one thing that I could have experimented more, but I didn't I wasn't getting the brightness that I wanted, even when I kinda like put more paint on it. It was it's only as bright as it can be, right? That's okay. It 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 was still fun. Thickening, thick, thickening the the trunk. As you can see, it's just a lot of rinse and repeat. Just going back over the same bark and painting in more twigs or branches, and then going from there. I do like as that twig went up, it pulled some of the background, gave it a little bit warm highlight color to it. If I were to follow the reference, it would have been a tree growing out of that tree, and uh, it would look funny. So. Not too bad, not too bad. It's fun. You see where I, I kind of overpainted right there? And I just kind of paint back in. So I just kind of give another branch. And we had wanted this, or I had wanted this tree to be thick anyway. Now you can get a lot of that separation. You see the background is now separate from the foreground. And doing this. I did get to play with the, the layers that, that are easier to merge and paint. I did a, a quick painting, just kind of see, pushing, moving it to the top, one layer, and moving the other one to the bottom, and seeing how they reacted, and it reacted perfect. I was just like, okay. So that could kind of give a little more uh, freedom to do more uh, concept art in there. Because you're not really restricted too hard with the. With it. Just look at it as, look at it at it like a tool. And uh, just going from there. You can see that branch has got a loop in it, so I just probably paint right over it. See that? Boom! Right through the middle. I'm thicken it up. See, I'm using those for um, just to branch off. And so far, you notice that there, there's try not to do any undos. If I mistake, make a mistake, like I said, um, just keep painting. And every now and then there'll probably be a hard mistake and you're like, oh, <laughs> I 
there's there's always something we can paint in place or fix it or something see right there I did it too thick did it thick I'm gonna fix it boom fixed done you don't see no mistake now Again, just keep going. Oh, there's another one right there. Little bulge. See the bulge. Who? Use the bulge. Use 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 it to your advantage. There you go. Just back and forth. I do paint some highlights on the tree with some white and uh, wanted to give it a little more, um, I guess, a roundedness feel to it. So, what do we got with this brush? What are we going to do? Do we do the people? I think we do the people, maybe? I don't know. Let's see. Go on the people. This is where I get a little nervous because. Yeah, this is where if like if I mess up, I'm like, oh, I had to paint over it again. Steady hands. You see the disable stabilizer at the bottom. Kind of block them in. Not sure if this is the boy or the girl that I'm painting. I think it's the boy. Yeah, the girl I do like a little more colored to the dress. And just let those colors blend right here. Just let it get the the shapes filling in the area. What's cool is if uh, if it's still kind of like thick paint, you can actually push that background on it a little bit. It'll kind of come off. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. I actually erased it. But I'm go in here and see how we fix it. Kind of push it, pushing it in there. Boom. Just a little bit. See, you just you just there was a mistake there. And I'm, I'm kind of just blending it down. And I'll probably paint it back in a little bit to kind of a little more definition. I have yet to like make my canvas really, really big and try to see how small details I can get, but I just uh, haven't gotten there yet. So like I like working on a smaller canvas to get it real painted real quick, but one of these days I'll, I'll try to block out some extra time to do a big, big, big canvas and see if it'll make the difference with these brushes because, right, the bigger it is, the more little details you can add. I've seen some very talented artists on the, the Vermilion channels and stuff, and it's a lot of inspiration. Really cool. Really good stuff out there good community too I love that everybody's like pretty supportive and everything else everybody's real nice in the community so far I've seen there you go there's one character Now the girl, I know I want to put like a little bit of color. See, there you go. Get the brush, get the brush out. What colors do I choose? Little blue, little blue, little green, little muted. 
A little more blue. There you go. Green. I went green. Oh, wow. Oh, yellow. So yellow and blue make green. A little more of this, a little more of that. There we go. Kind of close. This is like mad scientist kind of stuff. You just kind of push and pull. There we go. Little bit. Little gray, right? Something there. Uh oh. Went full green. Pull it back. Pull it back. Pull it back some more. There we go. There we go. A little dark, a little darker, darker. See, it's just kind of like blending, 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 and getting it close, and then you're just kind of like, all right. Let's darken that up. There you go. There we go. There we go. And when you see it, you're just kind of like, all right, this is the direction. There we're going. Where are we going? Right here. Right here is what I want. Let's do it. Paint the canvas. No fear. Boom. So. so, there we go. Some little bit of a blue green color. Painting that little dress on. And uh, afterwards, I, I think. I go back in with the like the grass brush to kind of blend in the characters and this would probably been a lot easier if I would have scaled up the canvas to be able to paint a little bit easier with a finer brush but eh, it's what it is I was happy at the end of the painting so it's all good that's really what it matters is how do you feel when you're done Painting the little, little figure parts here. Getting pretty close to the end of this video. There's another, another little bit, but that's mainly just kind of doing the stars after this. Once we get everything locked in, it's a fun little picture. This is this. I, I like the the little story. I kind of want them like kind of holding hands, I guess. Yeah, I get a better brush. Better brush. There we go. You can see I'm just kind of just moving paint around. It's really just back and forth. And with loose paintings like this, um, your mind, your your brain kind of like fills in the gaps when you step back from these. To the left, you can see the trees, how thick they are, how dark. And uh, that's where the, the blending of all the little brushes need to come in. Everything blurs really good, uh, or once once you get kind of some thick paint, kind of get some definition, shadow under the arm. Without the stars, it kind of feels empty, right? It, it, it's it's like asking for something in the sky yeah it would have been a beautiful sunset with like a little more definition in the clouds but i think those stars are what give it that final you know a little bit of you know the topping on the cake
but yeah once you get your foundation blocked in you know, everything else is just kind of like let's just refine it here and there that reference did have a lot of orange kind of bleeding down but I kind of I really wanted to I said like a time frame I didn't want to spend too much time but I didn't want to spend a, not enough time to get something and I felt like it was a good balance of getting here to there it's one of the few times I look back or it, I didn't edit it out I kind of look back and forth to kind of get an idea where where do we stand on this picture, right? We gotta stand back from the image every now and then to kind of get an idea. So this is where the the adjustments come in. I think. Okay. And usually those transitions either meant a new day of painting, so I either came back with a fresh mind. And that's also another thing, just stepping away. Like if you're working on something and you feel like you need to get to a certain point, you know, step away from your image. You'll see things a little differently over time. Trying to get a little more highlights in there here. There we go. Let's see where we go to next. You can kind of see where I pointed to. I think it's that sun. I wanted to just give it a little more pop. And it's the same color that's next to it, but I don't know. I'm just trying to see if there's something to do with it. There it, was. But it still kind of came out the same um, tone. So it's, it's all good. I was trying to see if I can brighten it up without using the white color, but I do kind of use this one a little bit. It helps slightly, but it doesn't... Uh, doesn't brighten it as much. So I'll try to do this. Let's see what we do. Take some away. Get back to that base canvas. Take some of that paint. Blend it back in with some harder yellow, maybe. canvas background white that um, towel was really good if you dip it in that water bucket it'll actually take away the paint really good permanent eraser so I'm trying to fix it here you can try to see where I'm going I'm trying to brighten it up I'm trying to give us a little, little more pop and you can see right here it doesn't pop it's still just getting back on canvas so it goes lighter, darker. I think it's about as bright as I could get it. And after a while I just kinda like says, okay, this is this is where it's just gonna be. It's about as bright. The thickness is there, the blending is there. Let's just smudge it together and make it make it what it is. It brightened it some. It okay. I'm just gonna play it back and forth. This brush show is always fun to play with. Just trying to get the, that white kind of blended in. And for those watching, like, oh man, you killed the grass at the bottom. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's what happens. You just gotta, like, you gotta go at it and fix something. And get a little brute force in there. See what happens here. Do I do? Do some highlights. And try to brighten it up. Try to see if it'll be different. Brighten it up. 
not enough, right? It's a, it's a white, but it's not like. Let's see. And see that came in darker. I'm gonna try to blend it with this. It still comes out a little muddy. Kind of. We're just kind of putting paint back on there and trying to see if we can get it brighter and a little more saturation there. But I think the, the limits of what, you know, you can push these paints is, is being shown. Um, it gets pretty close, though. If I really, really, really wanted to, I could probably export it out, get in Photoshop and put a little contrast and you know, do a little post-processing. But where's the fun in that, right? I just wanted to keep it natural. So, we don't, we don't go to Photoshop. Just so you know, we didn't, we didn't go that route. Could, maybe one day, who knows. I think I was happy with what, it, what I ended up with. Back in there. I think I forget that I use like the smooth and not the bristle. But it's okay. Boom 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 boom. Just trying to make a transition here. It got a little muddy, didn't it? there. It's okay. There we go. It always comes to that little setting, doesn't it? And you're like, oh, why is the brush not behaving? But there we go. I can fix it. getting kind of crazy with it. Boom. Blending in the people. Oh yeah, a little bit of color. Just kind of highlight some parts. Break up that foreground. I do. I forgot that I did do this. A little bit. It's just something to kind of like pick up the highlights of the sun, right? Not nothing overly um, done. Probably do some there too, right? Yeah, some hit some of that. It's just a lot of layers, right? Just back and forth. There you go. I'm just kind of guiding the paint, right? As it goes. And I feel like that, that little middle part is going to be something that will pick up more highlight too. A little more magical. I 
trying to get a little highlight on the tree since I went that route. It's a little tricky because you, you, you do want to follow the trunk on this one where you have to paint it again to kind of get it right. So you just kind of going to tease it back in there. picking up the highlights of the sun because it's higher up in the sky right and so that sun's going to hit it as it's leaving the earth that's something I wanted to kind of see a little more highlight pick up I want to do it in a few spots but it still kind of gives, the, gives you the gives you the idea Something like this, uh, I guess if you're gonna utilize those layers, that would probably be a wouldn't be a bad thing to try on. You know, at least that way, if you really wanted to undo, you can erase it out. Think of it like dry with wet paint on top. see that it just kind of gives a little little character to that bark just a little bit it gives it a some texture so. do your best to try to keep it in line right it all the way. So going in there, just doing the left side too. Try to get some of the same results on here. And it gets a little shaky if you don't keep that stabilizer on. You can just kind of, sometimes the stabilizer feels natural, but sometimes it's uh, harder I don't know it's just I go back and forth with using that stabilizer sometimes I just want to use my hand to naturally get it in there but the stabilizer helps a lot too so I'm just gonna blend into these colors since it's so thick it kind of blurs right into that dark real quick see now I have that stabilizer turned on just follow down all the way down. All the way down. Just enough, just a little tease of light. So that when you look at it from a distance, it, it, it reads a little bit right there. Boom. Oh, little highlight. Highlight there. Oop. I gotta tilt my brush or something. It's a slow process, right? You gotta not not too heavy of a hand. You gotta be real gentle with that brush to get it on there. So I don't know what I'm looking at back for back for. Alright. Now I think I do some stars. I think so. Let me just go with it. Here we go. Let's put some stars in the sky. Give these kids something to look at. Boom. There you go. And already it already feels complete, right? You got you got like a star. This is the first of the night showing up. And I'll start with like orange and then I go to white and then I go to maybe a blue. I don't know. I do use that sensitivity uh option because you wanna just dab it on there. And that's really what it's good for. Just gonna dab. See? Look at that. I did a big blob. But what I do? What I do? Let's see what happens. I kind of fix it. I fix it. Oh, I blur it out. Be gone, star. See? And then you can go back in and dab it again. 
It's okay. That star became part of the cloud. Ooh, ooh. One more time. Boom. You can see that now it's kind of given your composition eye flow where it, you know before your eye was directed back down to the people at the bottom but it kind of follows into the to the your eye kind of swoops from them at what they're looking at to the sky it's always interesting how that works and the, the way things are composed the way they're laid out to lead your eye into seeing uh, what they see. Or what the artist wants you to see. This is probably the funnest part of it, just putting the stars in. I always like doing stars in like watercolor and stuff like that. You'll you'll just Get a little brush and just boop, 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 and it's just so easy to do. It takes no effort. You can put as many as you want, as little as you want, however many clusters you want. If you really wanted to, you could actually follow like a, a picture of a reference of stars and do your constellation in there. That's another option. If you want to get real specific, right? You're like the, you know, you put the big dipper or whatever. Usually at night from where we look, you always see Orion's belt uh, from the backyard. I can always spot it. And all the other. I like using those um, apps you have on the phone to tell you where's the constellations in the sky. It's always fun to do that. On a nice, uh, not, not lately, it's been cold. <laughs> but on a spring or a fall night, you know, beautiful night sky. Yeah, that, that's fun to just look up and see what's out there. Sometimes you'll see a shooting star, right? Or a lot. It depends. Uh, time of the year, right? You get a meteor shower going on. Or where you live. If you live in, in the city, it's a little bit harder to see anything out there. But um, way out here, where there's less light. Uh, what is that? Light pollution? You can see the sky a little bit better. There you go. Just little dots. Boom. 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 It's magic. I think I stick with just those two colors. I don't really put a blue, I don't think. I should have. But it's what it is. And it is. Cool. Then we go behind the trees. Break that. Foreground, middle ground, and background, right? And over here, too. Can't leave that out. Boom, boom, boom. I'm crazy with the stars. Oop, I chill apart. Boom. Get some orange in there. We're going to deprive it of the orange. There we go. Give some love into the right side too. Can't forget the right side. But um, yeah, we're getting down to the last minute, almost the last few minutes of this video. So I guess I'll kind of wrap up what's going on. We we painted through this whole process. If you followed this far, and um, we did a background, middle ground, foreground, people ground, all right, and tree ground, and uh, just getting in there. This is a little bit of the comet. Or, or a meteor or something. Just kind of blurry. Give that look. That's what they saw. They wished upon that star. So I think I faded back in. But yeah, hopefully this video was, you know, had some something to learn from. I'm always learning, like I said. I know it's a little drawn out video, but if you feel it's a little too long, you could always fast forward it on a 
YouTube. I think they have a speed player now. You can double the speed. You really have to. But, um, yeah, it just depends on how much time you got, right? But I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, call this one done and, you know, hope you have a good day. So thank you for watching.